The Guider to Us by Flashforge, a complete unboxing and setup tutorial for your first print. Let's go. Out of the box, you're going to get a number of different accessories, one Type-D USB cable, mechanical lube, as well as extra tools to tinker with your machine. Then you'll get a kilo spool of filament as well as a spool holder, and then you'll get a feeding tube for your filament. We'll be going through all that in just a few moments. Getting further into the unboxing, you'll find your power cable as well as your quick start guide. Now we got two parts to go over that we have left after we unbox this a little bit more. Getting all those pieces of styrofoam out, you need to push up on the bed first before before you end up getting them out. Next you have your nozzle kit which comes with five different nozzles, four of them brass, one of them a hardened nozzle. We'll definitely be coming back with a video just going over the hardened nozzle, but next is the build plate. This one on screen right now is the magnetic build plate. We'll be getting to the glass build plate as well and clearing up any confusion on the build plate installation. There will be three securing clips you want to take off. They'll be yellow, two of them in each of the corners of the printer and then one in the center. Once you get those off, we need to calibrate the Z axis. You'll need to go into the settings of your Guider 2S. From there, go down to extruder calibration. It's a little bit down, it's right there. You click it, then wait for your printing bed to get back to the top. Once you get it back to the top, you need take a piece of paper and find that fine tuning and where you can feel the nozzle scratching the piece of paper ever so slightly probably took me around five to ten minutes to do this but after doing a bunch of different testing i found my perfect number which was negative 2.4 millimeters after that you want to turn on auto level and also calibrate your auto leveler so make sure you get the auto leveling application on as well as the level before printing depending enough you want that time to go into it but honestly it does take a bit of time but i like it either way hit that calibration auto level from there it's going to take some time to go up down and all around it's gonna take pressure points of all different places of the bed from there it'll be finished Next, you're going to have to decide whether you're going to use the glass build plate or the magnetic flexible build plate. Realistically, you can still use both build plates, but by the instructions, you'll think you could only pick one option. Flashforge tells you to take your magnetic build plate and adhese it to the glass build plate, which honestly doesn't seem like something I would want to do if I want to be able to interchange in between my magnetic build plate and my glass build plate. So the best option is to just leave it on the top and clip it on with some heavy duty paper clips. This way you can utilize your magnetic printing bed while also not making your glass printing bed obsolete. Beyond that, you're gonna have to level the bed regardless. You'll need to make a decision on your build plate at this moment because you need to level your build plate with the build plate you're gonna use because if you don't re-level the bed when using a different build plate, your extruder nozzle will just print in the air or print way too far into the print bed. This is because the magnetic printing bed sits higher than the glass bed within the Guider 2S. Now, if you're gonna switch to your glass bed for printing, you're gonna wanna do the same procedure go into your bed leveling and do the auto level. It will then ask you to prompt to start. Then from there, you're gonna have to adjust your bottom screws on the bottom because they were set for the magnetic build plate, which is a lot higher than the glass build plate. Now that we're done with all auto leveling, we can move on to filament loading. You can put your spool holder into the back of your printer. On either side, there are two options. One thing I'll say about this spool holder is that it only fits into Flashforge brand filament rolls. If and when you try third-party filament rolls, you'll see that the hole is either way too big and doesn't actually stay on the spool holder or they're too small and they don't go in. We have links in the description for three different versions of spool holders that will fit on the Flash Forge Guider 2S is back, which will allow you to print with third-party filament. After the spool holder, you'll want to install the filament feed tube. It's pretty easy. Just put one side, doesn't matter which one, into the back of the printer. Then take your filament and feed it through the tube. Don't install the side of the tube that fits into your extruder yet. We'll go over that in just a few moments. To load your filament, go to settings, filament, and load. From there, you're going to want to take your filament and slowly let it feed. There is a gear that will automatically feed your filament and push out any of your previous color. If you have any previous color in there, this is our first installation of filament. So as you can see, it's starting to come out right there and we are good to go. And we can press the done button. Next, we're gonna unload the filament just to go over it. Once you've pressed the unload button and waited for your extruder to heat up all the way, you can press the lever on the left side of your extruder and just pull up. You'll see that your filament will just come right out. The automatic gear feeder will be on for this. So you'll see some stringing coming out of the bottom of your extruder. No worries, that is just the previous color leaving. Don't forget where that lever is, going over it one more time. Sometimes your filament won't just come out right away, easy peasy. I had to do some pulling. Also, don't forget to keep pressing that lever. Boom, it's out. Next, to enable Wi-Fi printing, we're gonna go into our settings, go to Wi-Fi. Once you click on Wi-Fi, go through and connect to your Wi-Fi. Once you're done with that, flash print will just automatically recognize your printer on the network and you should be able to wirelessly print to your printer. Next, going over slicer software, 
software setup, I prefer Flash Print. Don't even try to use Flash DL Print. Honestly, there's just headaches to get. Once you installed Flash Print, open it and change your printer to the Guider 2S. Make sure you pick the right one, of course. This will ensure that your building platform is sized properly and you can print the whole print bed if you really want to. Next, we're gonna load a 3D model. We're gonna repair the model. And then from there, we're going to start slicing. After we have started slicing, we're going to go through all of our different parameters, set them up how you want them. For the first print, we're just gonna keep all of the settings at the normal parameters. For our first print, we're gonna use a USB drive, stick it into your PC. From there, we're gonna save. This will save the slicing settings and start slicing your model into the pathway for which it's gonna be printed. Then you're gonna to go to the top of the screen, second to far right button, that's your export button. From there, you're gonna save it onto your USB drive, and then we're gonna take that USB drive and put it into the FlashForge Guider 2S. In the Guider 2S menu, hit Build, then go to the middle button, that is the USB stick. Then from there, go to the right folder where you put your model, then press Build, which will start heating up your build plate as well as your extruder. And the first print is looking really good. Nothing out of the ordinary other than a perfect print. Honestly, I'm loving it. Let's get into the light. You got Elon. Let's move on. If you don't want to use the USB stick, there are a couple of other options. Polar Cloud is one of them. I'm not exactly recommending them, but let's go through the setup. First, sign up for free or connect your Google account. Next in the top right corner, click on your account name and everything. Go to your cloud account. And then from there, the bottom of the page, you'll see your pin. You'll take that pin and your account email address. Then take that information into your settings, click on Polar Cloud Connection, and then connect to cloud. You'll have to enable it in that top right corner first, and then you'll put in your email address and that pin. Once you're connected, you'll be able to monitor your Guider 2S through the website with at least looking at the camera and load files stored on Polar Cloud. Other than that, I don't find much utility in this. Also, the webcam is super laggy when it is on Polar Cloud. Now moving on to my favorite slicer and print monitoring software, Flash Print 5. Honestly, my top notch and best pick. It does have some more complicated slicing settings that you can utilize, but don't use them too soon until you ask some questions on Reddit. Honestly, they are the best community for getting help. Also, there's a Facebook group. I'll put that link in the description below for anyone that wants to join a community that is is all about helping people who are fresh and new to the FlashForge 3D printer scene. Now getting back to why I think Flash Print 5 is the best, it has the awesome monitoring system where you can turn on the camera, turn on the lights, turn off the lights, turn the camera back off, or take a screenshot of your printer while it's mid-print, and you can adjust certain parameters like the extruder temperature, the bed temperature, as well as the printing speed. To take a picture screenshot of your printer while it's printing, go to that bottom right camera option. It'll open up the screen and then you can just pick where you want to save it to. Make sure that you know where you save it to because that's always important because you don't want to lose things. Getting into our first prints with the glass printing platform, we ended up having a time lapse here. You can see it's working great, no complaints. It just make sure that you re-level your bed for the glass platform after taking off the magnetic flexible printing platform. When removing wider prints from the building platform, you'll wanna use some kind of compressor gun. I just went with one of these cause it's rechargeable, way better. And it does speed up the process of getting these prints off the bed to then start up another print. Here's another Musk print that's just coming out off of the magnetic flex printing bed. Tall prints with little surface tension are easy to come off. They just pull off. Don't even have to flex the bed at all. Then we have a bigger print, which ended up having some stringing and failed a bit where the bottom was separating from the rest of the top side of the print. All in all, when you get into bigger prints, make sure you re-level your bed. That is always important so you don't get any stringing. Last, getting back to the glass platform, if you leave the print on, it will just totally come off easy does it. So you don't have to use the compressed air gun, but I prefer to because it speeds up times on turnarounds for prints. And lastly, make sure when you're switching back to your build platforms that you re-level the bed. The heights are different. And if you don't, you'll be printing into thin air. Other than that, thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, become a member, help support the work that we do. This is outside of our purview, but we will be coming back with more content around this printer, going over how to utilize Cura and exporting those files and then importing them back into Flash Print to then be used. Either way, stay elevated and peace out.